Welcome to a brief introduction on environmental magnetism. The EPA estimates that there are over 2 million active unplugged oil and gas wells buried in the United States. These abandoned unplugged wells leak, spreading toxic chemicals through the ground, polluting our groundwater, wreaking havoc on our environment. Not only that, but they also emit methane gas into our atmosphere, one of the most problematic greenhouse gases. The EPA estimates that these millions of unplugged wells contribute to the same level of pollution equivalent to the CO2 emissions from 2 to 5 million cars in a single year. The best way to solve this crisis is to plug these wells, however, because they've been abandoned and responsibilities diverted from the owners, finding them is difficult. Fortunately, geophysicists have found a way to use magnetism to locate abandoned wells and other buried environmental concerns such as pipelines, waste storage tanks, and unexploded ordinances, a type of landmine that is responsible for the death and severe injury of 15 to 25,000 people a year. The use of magnetism isn't only limited to finding hazardous objects. Geophysicists also use magnetism to find buried archaeological artifacts as it allows them to scan the near surface without disturbing the ground, helping preserve the artifacts. So what is magnetism? Magnetism is the force exerted by magnetic objects through attraction or repulsion. Magnetic materials like iron, nickel, and cobalt are known to be magnetic. These materials exert their own constant magnetic force and are therefore known as permanent magnets, like the classic horseshoe magnet. Now, magnetism can either be induced or remnant. Some objects only become magnetic when they're placed near a magnetic field, like a permanent magnet. These objects are known as induced magnets. Once the field is removed, the induced magnet loses its magnetization. Since a permanent magnet continuously exerts its own magnetic field, it is classified as a remnant magnet, as the magnetic field remains regardless if there is an external field applied or not. The measure of how much a material can actually become magnetized in the presence of a magnetic field is known as the magnetic susceptibility, where M is the measure of magnetization, H is the magnetic field strength, and X is the volumetric magnetic susceptibility. So what does a magnetic field look like? Let's assume we have a permanent magnet generating its own magnetic field. The permanent magnet is separated by a magnetic north pole and a magnetic south pole. This is known as a magnetic dipole. If you cut the magnet in half, the two halves now have their own magnetic north and magnetic south. Invisible magnetic field lines surround the north and south poles in a closed loop. These lines never cross each other, and the closer they get together, the stronger the magnetic field becomes. Considering that the Earth's core is primarily composed of iron and nickel, and that most permanent magnets are also made out of metals like iron and nickel, the Earth is technically one giant magnet, with magnetic field lines moving from the north to south pole. The geographical north pole of our Earth and the magnetic north are different, however. The true north is a fixed point at the most northern point on Earth at the North Pole. The magnetic north, on the other hand, is actually the direction a compass needle points to as it aligns with the Earth's magnetic field. The difference between true and magnetic north is measured in an angle known as the magnetic declination. The angle between Earth's surface and the magnetic field lines is known as the magnetic inclination. Earth's magnetic field is very complex. The magnetic field is not uniform around the planet and is actually constantly changing. Some natural events like geomagnetic storms caused by eruptions of solar wind or solar flares from the sun can cause a temporary but drastic disturbance to the Earth's magnetic field. Magnetic fields can be either local or regional. Local magnetic fields of the Earth are very isolated fields being emitted from objects such as permanent magnets or even certain rocks in the subsurface that have their own unique magnetic field. These fields are localized in very specific locations, hence the name local magnetic fields. Regional magnetic fields, on the other hand, are magnetic fields that span over much larger areas. For example, 
If you wanted to estimate the magnetic field of your city or location, you would be interested in the regional magnetic field. So now how can we use magnetism to help solve environmental problems? When we search for buried objects of interest that also happen to have magnetic properties, we refer to these objects as magnetic anomalies. In order to find these magnetic anomalies, we can conduct a magnetic survey in our location of interest using a highly sensitive geophysical tool known as a magnetometer. This device allows us to measure the slightest variations in magnetism between the local field and the ground, potentially indicating the presence of a magnetic anomaly. While measurements on the ground are being taken with a magnetometer, another instrument known as a base station simultaneously records the Earth's local magnetic field every few seconds. Once a survey is completed, differences between the local field measurements and the ground measurements are plotted on a two-dimensional magnetic plot. Because buried objects like oil tanks or unexploded mines are so strongly magnetic, Differences between their magnetic field and local field are very large, making them quite obvious to spot on a two-dimensional plot. Another type of magnetic survey that can be conducted is known as a gradiometer survey, where the gradient or rate of change of the magnetic field is constantly being measured. This magnetic survey does not require a base station, as the variations of the magnetic field are constantly being recorded. If the processing results are good, and the position of the magnetic anomalies is confirmed, geophysicists will send this information to excavators, archaeologists, or contractors who will take the next appropriate steps. However, if the processing results are bad, this can be caused by numerous things such as a poor setup, to too much noise interference, to simply because there is nothing there. Thank you for watching.